best. Amen. It seems like your best just ain't good enough. Amen. God got it. But he got it. Amen. He got it. He got it because he understands. Yes, sir. You know exactly where you are. Got it. Amen. And he'll come to you. Yeah. Amen. He'll come to you in your space. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Amen. And say, "Well, well done, well done. my good and faithful servant." Yes, sir. Yeah. Well done. Well yeah. done. That's what I work for. Yeah. That's what yeah. I believe yeah. for. Because yeah. I want to hear God tell me one day, yeah. yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, yeah. well done. Amen. Yeah. I fell down over here, but I got. That's a wonderful song. Yes, it is. I love that song. I love it. He'll understand because so many times people don't understand. No, no, no. No, no. They don't know where you're coming from. People think you have Amen. But God understands. He understands even when you fail. Yeah. He understands yeah. because He gives you the strength to do what? Get yeah. back. I got an interesting service for you today. Uh -huh. We're coming out of Revelation. Oh. Oh, okay. Fourth chapter. Revelation. Four. 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 Number four. Well, five. Okay. And one. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Yes. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Verse 3, and no man in heaven, nor in earth, no man under the earth was able to open that book, neither to look thereon. You may be seated. I call this church meeting in heaven. Church me in heaven. Now, to get a good gist here of what's going on, let's go back to 4, Revelation 4. You see, I see a lot of preachers, they throw out one verse and go from there, but I ain't that good. I got to go back. Read some of it and bring it up too. Yeah. So let's try four. I want you to set your minds and use your imagination this morning. Because we're going into the spirit world. After this, Revelation 4, I look and behold, a door was open in heaven. That's like a scroll was. Oh, you know how you roll a scroll open? A scroll! The heaven opened up like a scroll. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking. So you know trumpets get high. Yeah. Amen. So we're talking about a, a voice high pitch. talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now hereafter ain't pointed out exactly when hereafter is. So I won't point it out either. Any verse 1. Chapter 4 verse 1. 
Now verse 2, and immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, look, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Just one person sitting on this throne. And the throne was set there. And he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Let's see what Jasper is. Jasper is a precious stone of various colors. Amen. Uh, for some are purple, some are blue, some are green. Some are even the color of brass, which is gold. All right. And uh, and a sardine. That may not be proper pronunciation. But a sardine stone. So he that sat upon it looked like uh, there was to look upon like jasper. Different colors and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne and in sight like an emerald. Emerald is a light colored green. So I'm trying to get this picture in your mind. One sitting on the throne, there's jasper like a rainbow around him and there's another rainbow like green. Light green. I, I, I looked it up. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders. That's twenty-four elders, twenty-four seats, sitting clothed in white raiment, verse 4. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne, listen to this now, I want you to get this in your mind. Out of the throne proceeded lightning. Well, stormy day, you see all them lightning flashing across the sky. This came out the throne and thunderings. Probably was scary too. And voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne was a sea of glass. So just see this, that's, that's crystal where you could see through it. Sea of glass like under crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So they weren't going to miss nothing. They seeing everything. See, God is all seeing. Amen. Ain't nothing you can do that he don't see. They may even got beasts to see. So if he busy doing something else, they looking at you. All right. Seven. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast, like a calf, had to be a baby bull. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was a flying eagle. Now, I just happen to know astrology. And these that they place in here are your fixed signs. Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, that's the man, and Lion is the Leo. See, Folk don't know it, but God is hooked up in it all. See, now, the spirit is represented with this six act. You know what I'm talking about, Jesus. And before the throne was a sea of glass. I said that, didn't I? Yes. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not dead saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. 
And when these beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the 24 elders, verse 10, fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and the power for thou hast created all things. Yes. For thy pleasure. See, God created everything not for me and you. He did it for himself. That's what he says it. He created it for thy pleasure that they were created. All right, now let's go to five. <clears throat> it's going to get more interesting now. But I want you to get in your mind, and I want you to see the throne. In your mind, I want you to see all that. Or try to visualize it. All right, it's going to get heavy now. And I saw him in the right hand. Let me start over. And I saw in the right hand of him, verse 1, that sat on the throne a book or scroll written within. And on the back side of it, it was written and sealed with seven seals. Now we know the number seven is the number of completion. Right. Now when you study <clears throat> Revelation, there's a lot of symbols in Revelation. And you kind of need to know some of the symbols so you'll know what Revelation is trying to tell you. You see, John wrote Revelation in the time of war. You see, so he had to write in a way that the enemy didn't know what he was talking about. But those who he wrote to knew what he was talking about. All right, and this is John who wrote this. Beloved John. All right. Two. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who and what to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Well, let me explain something to you. The word worthy is really saying who is legal. Y'all hear that? Who is legal? to open this book. See, this is like being in, in probate court. You see? Uh, <clears throat> just anybody couldn't open this book. Because this book is the deed that Adam turned over when he sinned. God got it. He had it all the time. And he knew in time that one like Adam, meaning one who was created by God, would come and claim this. See, this is an inheritance. And only a, a, a blood relative of Adam could claim it. That's heaven. Okay, so Adam was created by God, right? That's right. So God is his father, right? That's right. All right, so when Adam sinned, he turned over his deed to save. To save, but God had it in his court. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that says in his right hand. So God had it because God knew that the laws of inheritance on the year of Jubilee. You got to give that relative a chance to come and claim this book because it's in here. I hope y'all got that. Because that's important. Yes, it is. That's important. See, that's why Jesus came in the first place. Because he was the only relative of Adam. Amen. I think 1 Corinthians. 15 chapters somewhere in there where uh, Jesus is 
called what? Second Adam. Second Adam. Yeah. Why did he call him Second Adam? Because first Adam was created by God, and the second Adam was created by God. Yes. And the second Adam is the only one who could come and claim this inheritance. Oh, now, when you claim the inheritance, these people might have had this for centuries. And they got eight people on the land. Well, the first thing you got to do is get the aliens off the land. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's some heavy stuff I'm trying to lay on you today. Yeah. Amen. And what we talking about the land, the earth. When, when, when Adam sinned, Satan took a run of the earth. He, he, he told Jesus, look at all of this. This is mine. And if you jump down from here, I give you all of this. So in order for him to get it, he had it on it. Yes. I got witness here, sir. Yes. yes. All right. Now you understand what this book is. It ain't a book. It's a scroll. And it was sealed so nobody could open it but the relative of Adam. All right. yes, sir. I want y'all to get this. Because you ain't going to hear it nowhere else. All right, let's do some more. Now that we know what this deed is, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written with in and on the back side and sealed with seven seals. Verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy, who is legal to open the books, who is the real relative to loose the seals thereof. Verse 3. And no man no in heaven, yes. no man in earth, no man under the earth was able to open the book. Neither to look at. Not only could he not open the book, he couldn't even look at it. I tell you, when God do something, boy, it's done. It's a done deal. And only the right man can open and do this. So, and no man in heaven or on the earth, and, and, and I, John, was talking here, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereof. I'm on verse 4. Verse 5. And one of the elders said to me, we not. We not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed. We stop right there. How did he prevail? He was beat, crucified, crucified healed. Millions and millions of people yeah. that Satan had afflicted. Yeah. He did all of that. Yes, he did. That's how he prevailed. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and the son of Elder said, Don't oh, weep, my brother. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's Jesus, y'all. Right. The root of David had prevailed to open the book and to loose. The seven seals. I ain't going into the seven seals today. That's a whole nother thing. But what that is about is once you got the land, you got to clear the land of the alien that was been there all this time taking over. So the first order of business is to clear. Amen? Now you're going to have to go to the next chapter to get that. And we ain't going there today. Yes, sir. You got to clear it out. But you got to clear that land. You got to get the devil out. Clear it up. Yes. Just like we had to clear it up. You got to do it. You got to do it. We had to do it here. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. God sent the water. Thank you. And flushed us out. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Have mercy. Thank you. All right. Praise your holy name. Yes, sir. So, now, 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 come on. Clear 
Yes. Yes. That's all you got to do. Yes. It's just say that name. Yes. Amen. 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 It, it, if you can't talk, think it. Yes. You didn't hear me. Amen. If you can't talk, oh, think it. Yes. Because God picks up your thoughts. Yes. Amen. Amen. We hope we said something this morning. Jesus is the man. Yes. I call him a strong man. That's the way I look at him because all that he went through, the book said there's no man who was beat worse than Jesus. So that made him a strong man. Because he went through all of that, took everything they gave him. Yes. And then they tried to kill him and couldn't. So he gave up his life. Now how you kill a God? You can't kill a God. He had to give up his life. Amen. And that's another part where he tricked the devil. See, the devil thought he killed him. <laughs> See, he tricked him right there. The devil thought he killed him. No, Jesus said, no no man take my life. He said, now nah, I'll lay it down. But I also pick it back up. Because can't no man take my life. You can't kill God. They tried, but you couldn't kill God. I mean, they beat Jesus unmercifully. Yes. And I talk about it all the time. It's ugly. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. So we thank God today that we know who our kinsman, redeemer. And that's who Jesus is. He's our kinsman. He, he said, look, I call you brothers. That's what he told the disciples. He said, I call you brothers. So we're all related. You see, in God's house. Amen? Amen. Anybody got anything to say? All right, let us sing. For this message.